Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to talk about the classification project that we did. So we used Teachable Machine to actually like build and classify for different kind of objects. And in this example here, we just did it with like, for example, different kind of like hand gestures. So we did and trained the neural network in uh, the Teachable Machine in the clouds. And now in this video here, I'm going to show you like how we can actually like export the model that we're trained in uh, the Teachable Machine and how we can deploy them into our own Python script and then how we can use it later on. So in this video here, we're just going to load in an image of one of the classes that we want to do uh, classification on or like do prediction on. So these are images that we have not trained on before. And then in another video, I'm going to sh show you how we can actually like use it uh, with OpenCV and how we can actually like open up a webcam and then do classification on all the frames that we get in from the webcam with OpenCV and how we can use that model to actually like deploy it in OpenCV as well. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. And you can come join the channel, chat with us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. Also remember to hit the subscribe button under the video here. It really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. And I just really appreciate the support. So thank you guys. So first of all here, let's jump into uh, the TGMO machine. So in the previous videos, we have been doing this classification and then train our model afterwards. So we had uh, three different kind of classes. We had the victory hand gesture, uh, we had the wave, and then we also had uh, the thumbs up. So we already trained that model and we just went over here to the right, export the model as I'm going to show you in a second. We created three kind of classes we did and we actually generated our data set in the TGMO machine here. So if you're new to this video and, and you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure to check those previous videos out where we actually like built uh, the neural network here in the TGPO machine and I showed you how we can actually like do it. So we created our data set for different kind of classes and then we just hit this train button and it will just train the neural network here. It took like around like two, five seconds or something like that. It was really, really fast and efficient. And then we can also see the, the, the results over here to the right after we actually like train our model. But we can see we have this export model button that we can get like a preview. And we can see that we actually need to uh, train our model before we can actually like export our model. But if we just uh, hit the export model here, it would download a folder or like a, the file to our actual computer. And we're just going to uh, unzip those files. And then we can use it later on in our own Python script as I'm going to show you. So first of all here, we can also see uh, some code snippets of how we can deploy uh, the models here that are trained in the TGPO machine in, for example, TensorFlow and JavaScript. We can also use the TensorFlow, which we're going to do uh, in this video here, but we can also use TensorFlow Lite if you are going to, for example, like uh, deploy your neural network that you're trained on an embedded device, like let's say, for example, Raspberry Pi or Jetson Nano, uh, then you can actually like, use the TensorFlow Lite uh, framework or like library instead. But in this video here, I'm just on a standard desktop computer, so we're going to use TensorFlow. I'm just going to copy this uh, copy this uh, script here or like this code snippet here into a Python script. Then we're going to load in some new images and then do predictions on those images with the model that we're trained here in the Teachable machine. So we can actually like, see how we can use this code and the model that we're trained and then deploy it in our own Python script and then do predictions on images that, uh, that the model hasn't trained on before or like even seen before. And then as I said, in the next video, I'm going to do it with OpenCV. So how, how we can see like how we can use OpenCV and this model here to like, like deploy it into OpenCV. We can load in our images, do all the processing uh, and all our methods on our images in OpenCV. And then after that, we can pass it through our neural network here or like a model here that we have uh, generated with Teachable Machine. So here we can see the folder that I've, that I've just unzipped here. So if I go into this folder, we can see that we both have the Keras model.h5, which is the file format that TensorFlow is using to so actually like store the model and the weights. And then we also get a file here uh, with the labels, so the corresponding labels for the classes that we want to do classification on or like the class that we want to detect. So we're just going to import these two here. So we can see over here to the left that we both have uh, the, the, in the same directory or like in the same folder as our Python script. And I just have this Python script called classification.py. And then we have our model, we have our labels, and then we're going to have the free images that we're going to pass through our model that we have uh, then exported and deployed here in our own Python script. So we can see here we have this thumbs up image. So we're going to do predictions on this image here. We have the wig to resign, and then we also have a wave image here. So we're going to pass all of these images here through the model. So we can see that we can actually like deploy the model that we have exported and trained in the clouds, then deploy it here in our own Python script and use it for our own applications and so on, like our own projects. So we're going to classification Python script here again. We can see that we need to import TensorFlow and pill. So we're going to use pill to actually like open in, uh, open up and load in the images. And then here we're just going to load in the model here. So these, these are just lines of code. I just copied it from the website. So we just trained the model, uh, export the model, copy the code snippet, and we just copy paste it in here. And then we can actually like just pass the images through it here. So 
First of all, I ju I'm just going to open up the labels here as well. So we're just going to open up this text file and then we're going to read in all of the lines, um, all of the lines in the text file. And then we're going to store all the class names in this variable uh, called class names here. So if we just go into the labels, we can see that our the zero of the index is a thumbs up prediction. And the first element is a wave prediction. And the second element, the label is a victory. So if we're going to classification here again, I'm not going to go through like these lines of code. We're just opening up the image. Then we're exporting it or like converting it to a NumPy array and so on. So we can actually like use it to deploy into our model because it takes a NumPy array uh, instead. And we also need to normalize our array before we're passing it through a model because uh, that is how the neural network is trained and how it works best. As I've talked about in the deep learning tutorials, how, why we're actually like normalizing our values before we are training and passing uh, our images through our neural networks, both doing training and also doing inference. Then we can actually have our prediction here. So again, when we're using TensorFlow, we just call the model.predict and then we just pass in the data that we actually like want to do the prediction on. And then we can print out the prediction here and we will get a corresponding score or like a confidence score for each of the predictions or like for each of the classes that we have. So in this example here, we have three classes. But first of all here, we're just going to create a, an index variable here where we want to see like what index are we actually like predicting or what are we classifying with this model here when we pass this type of data to it. So here we're just going to take NumPy and then we're going to use argmax from NumPy because we're just going to take the maximum value of those predictions that we made. So we're going to take the highest confidence score. We're going to get the index from that. So we can actually like print out specifically what uh, class that we're predicting. So here we're just going to uh, uh, specify the prediction. So we're taking the argmax value of the prediction and that is our index of our class. Then we can actually like go down here and just uh, call this class name. So this will actually like be our class name that we have classified and that will be the class names. And then we take the index index of that because that will be the actual like class that we have classified in this in, in this situation here. So now we both have this, uh, we have the class names and we also have all the predictions, but then we can also go in and get the confidence score of that prediction. So I'm just going to have a confidence score here, uh, a variable here. And then we have the confidence score and we set that equal to and then we will take the prediction up here. And then again, we're just going to take the index from that prediction because we just want the, uh, the confidence score for that class that we have classified uh, in this example here. So down here, we, we can just go here and print out the class name. So first of all, we're just going to have this class. So this is the class that we've predicted. And this will, this will be the class names or like the class name, not class names, because that is the whole list where we have all the class names or all our labels in. And then we're also going to print both the class and also the confidence score. So we're just going to have this conf confidence score. And here at the end, we're just going to specify what we actually like want. So that, that is our confidence score here. So now we're, now we're both printing out the class and also the confidence score for each of the images here. So up here, just created this image.open and we're going to do, the, do it for all the free images. So first of all, we're just going to start with the thumbs up JPEG. So we're just going to load in this image. We're going to pass it through our neural network first. We're scaling the values using NumPy arrays. We're normalizing the array. Then we pass our data through our model. Then we see what are we actually like predicting. We take the max value from that prediction and then we find the label that corresponds to that. So we both have the label that we're classifying and also the confidence score, like how confident are how confident are we that this is actually like the class that we're predicting. So if we go into the classification pi file here again, we can just run the program. It will open up the, 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 the image here, pass it through the neural network, and then we'll get output down here um, at the bottom in the terminal or in the output. So here it just loads up TensorFlow first of all. So it has to do that every time that we're opening up a program. Uh, we can also see like different kind of stuff if we're using a TPU or um, TPU or CPU and stuff like that with uh, TensorFlow. And in this example, I'm just using a CPU. But we can see here we get like a 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.9 confidence score that this is actually like a thumbs up that we're predicting. And that is correct because we're actually like loading in this thumbs up image that I just showed you. And, this is, uh, and that is this image here. We also get like 0.02% uh, probability uh, that this is a wave. And also the last year we also have like a small probability that this is the other classes, but it, the neural network is actually like really certain uh, that this is a thumbs up in this example. We print out the thumbs up score down here. And then down here, we actually like need to, um, we need to take the served element before we're taking the index here uh, because we can see that this is a double list. So we have one list here and then we have another list. 
uh, another list as well. So we have to take the served index and then we're going to take the index of the actual class predictions uh, prediction that we're doing. So we're just going to do that for the next one we're going to do. So here we are just going to take the wave image. Again, we're just going to run our program to see what we're actually like predicting. So if we're going to do the bottom one, we need to load in all of these different kind of things. Again, we can see the GPU. We don't have a, a GPU available and stuff like that. We can see the versions um, and so on and so on. Uh, but here we can see that we're predicting a wave. So this is the wave image that we actually have. And if we just go into the image that we're loading in, we can see that this is actually like a wave. And we can see that it is way more confident in this situation that this is actually like a wave. It is almost 100% uh, certain that this is a wave, uh, a wave scenario, which is also correct. So it's both like a really nice and efficient and also very accurate models that we can create uh, with the teachable machines. It, it, it's really easy to, to generate the data set for our classes, we can just add new classes, add new classes. We can either upload our own data to the teachable machine or generate it in the teachable machine uh, with a camera. We change the model for five seconds. It literally took five seconds to train this model here. And then we can just deploy it by copy pasting the code snippet directly using it here in our own Python script, in our own application and project. So the last uh, image here that, I'm wa that I want to show is the victory. So we have been through all of the three classes that we want to do predictions on. So now here we're just going to run um, our actual like program again. We're just going to hit the run. It will load up all of the things here again. We are just going to do that. When I'm going to do it and later on in OMCV, we will only load it in once and then we're just going to have our webcam running all the time. But here we can see that we are predicting that this is a victory class and a confidence score of 99% uh, probability here again. So it's really accurate in this example here as well. Regarding the thumbs up, there could be some, uh, there could be some like uncertainty if if we did not actually like, train our hand to be like in this exact position because we only took hundred samples in our class. If maybe if we move like the thumbs up over here to the left or right or a bit up or like maybe tilted it a bit more, it will be more uh, accurate. Or if we just used another image that it was more certain in. You don't even need to write any code at all to actually like deploy your neural network as well. You can just copy paste the code snippet. So you don't have to write any code at all. You can just generate your own classifier, sound classifier, post a post classifier, train it, generate a data set without writing any code. It's just really nice, really efficient. Everyone can do it. It takes no time and the neural network is really efficient and very optimized because we're using, uh, we're using Google and they are using like really good optimizers and stuff like that. And then we just deploy it with copy pasting and it just worked perfectly in our own Python script. Uh, we just need to install like pip install TensorFlow on our computer or in our environment before we actually like running these models here. So we need to pip install TensorFlow uh, before that. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell notification under the video. So you will get a notification when I upload a new video because it just really helps me and the YouTube channel out on a massive way. And we're just creating like this really nice uh, community where we're helping each other and also in the Discord server. It's just really nice to see that all of you guys are asking questions in there about your own projects or if you just have questions for some of the videos. And all of you guys are also helping each other. So it's just really nice and it really, really makes me happy to see the whole community that we're building uh, around this channel here. So thank you once again. I'm also doing a computer vision tutorial and a deep learning tutorial that you already know about. So if you don't want to know more about computer vision, uh, the basic stuff about computer vision, the, the operations we can do on images, do camera calibration, stereo vision to estimate depths um, in, the, in, in images of different kind of objects, or just want to know like how these models and how deep learning works under the hood, because right now we're just using deep learning and artificial intelligence, but also have videos and, and tutorials where I go more in depth and show how we can actually like, do it and the theory behind it as well. So remember to check those tutorials out. I'll link to one of, one of them up here or else I'm going to see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.